Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. The first unboxing episode of 2021 is actually just an uncasing, a little bit of a story to share with you guys today. So in 2020, I got two different modern flying Vs, kind of roughly around the same time, like about a month or two apart. And my first one, I actually ended up trading away locally, and we had worked out a deal between that instrument and these four. Typically, I don't like multi-for-one trades, but there just happened to be a few cool pieces in here that I wanted to check out on the show, and I knew they would just be easy to sell and move on to some new owners. So I thought it was a win-win-win because this guy, he was tired of having so many guitars. He wanted something a little bit quirky, a little bit special and something that might have some investment value. That's not saying that these guitars aren't any good, but you know, that modern flying V was definitely more his style and he ended up loving it. I guess he's gonna play coffee house gigs with it. That would be awesome. I would come up and talk to the guy that's rocking the modern flying V. So let's go ahead and see what guitar number one is here. Oh, we've got some strange i want to say it's like a little devil caricature but i know what it's supposed to be so we've got an angus young signature in here you get the little devil tail but inside here sleep's kind of a hard guitar to find so this is the 2000 gibson sg signature of angus young now angus has had many many different releases of his sgs honestly there haven't been very many modern day ones i'm surprised that they don't go back to him and start to do some more of these things because he's had custom shop releases he's had gibson usas like this particular one but just like the old slash models this one has his little caricature on the headstock and that's pretty much what makes this one special as well as just having generally nice woods like this one has some pretty cool figuring within it same thing goes for the top, you get a little bit of flame figuring in this one, but what was cool is this guy. So it just looks like a regular Maestro Vibrola, which was special at that point in time. There wasn't an original collection that you could just buy one of these off the shelf. But if you take a really close look, it says Angus instead of Gibson. Now it looks like they left the lyre alone, but they added two thunderbolts there. So that's kind of something that makes this special, but this is a chunky guitar. Like it's a, it's a really heavy body and that's actually good for an SG because I'm betting this thing will not have any neck dive and that's something that a lot of people hate about SGs. It's a rather thin neck, but yet it's still a little bit rounded. But other than the little guy on the headstock and on the Maestro and the Maestro itself, it's just a regular kind of like 68 styled SG. Now this one, it's had different pickups at one point in time. I believe he said he restored it to stock, like the toppers are missing off of the knob. So it's a little bit of a player's grade. I don't know if I want to make this one my review and demo piece. The arm on the trim is like all cracked and beat up. So. And with this one, I was scared it had a headstock repair. Because if you look like right here, it's going to be hard to see. You can just barely see something that looks like a line, a ding, or an impression. But after looking at this one under black light, it is not a repair. It's just like a, a little ding mixed with some wood grain in that same location. And next up here, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. So this one was actually a guitar that I didn't realize I already had one. Like I knew I had something similar to this, but it wasn't until I was doing some research that I found out that, oh, this is the other color that I don't currently have. So inside this slightly beat up case, we've got one of the nicest SGs I think I've ever seen. So this is a 2015-2016 SG Supreme. It's one of those ones that doesn't have like the, uh, the crazy, crazy weird specs like uh, Les Paul on the back of the headstock waving to you or the wide nut width. I mean, if you like those specs, they're fantastic, but for everyone else, the 2015s are a bit of an eyesore. But take a look at this top. I really like this one. The combination of the blue kind of, you know, it's been faded a little bit. You can definitely see that along the edges, but this is one of those carved top SGs. So I also have that red one, but I think I prefer the blue just because you now I'm not much of a red guy. But yet the back here, it's like a really dark Arctic, like frozen tundra blue thing going on here. And this one is actually a 2016 model. But a carved top, flame top SG, they're not for everybody, but they're kind of unique. I like it. 
This one's definitely been played. It's got some light wear and tear along the edges. But the one thing about all these instruments is they were definitely in a home that has like a big dog or something. So if you're allergic to pet hair or don't like the smell of that, I would not suggest checking these guitars out in my reverb shop. Let's take a break and uh, check this thing out. Do I actually have a legitimate Jackson? Well, only time can tell, but we at least have a real Jackson case. That's nice because I just uh, yesterday reviewed the fake Jackson, the Buckethead style V. Now this guy right here is not Buckethead, not Dave Mustaine, but a Randy Rhodes model. And I don't really know much about Jackson's, but he told me this was a Jackson Pro Series Randy Rhodes 24, something like that. Now, from what I can see is it looks like we have some sort of a swamp ash top or at least some sort of a, a top veneer with a Floyd Rose in it. And it's got this satin finish, so it's pretty nice as far as that goes. You can see the uh, the clunky heel has definitely been shaped a little bit more than that Buckethead styled one, that's for sure. But he made a whole bunch of upgrades to these things. So he had said that these are like a thousand bucks brand new. Yeah, that sounds right for about a mid-tiered level Jackson. But he also said he put uh, Tosin Abasi signature Fishman Fluence pickups in here. I think those are like a $250 upgrade. He also gave it the case, which was 150 bucks. So this particular example, if you're looking for something, you need the upgraded pickups and the nice case. It'll definitely be pretty nice. Now, what I'm not sure here is I'm guessing that it comes from the factory this way. But it's like they mask it off right here and then they spray the lacquer and then there's just a little area that has nothing. It's like, okay, that looks a little bit strange. Maybe it has to do with how they uh, spray the body here because you can see that the maple is a different color as compared to uh, what I would assume is a mahogany body or something like that. But hey, this one has the correct output jack location. If you noticed in that Jackson yesterday, they were lazy. They put it there because it's a lot easier than doing whatever routing they have to do to put these things together. If this was a string through version and not a Floyd Rose, maybe I would do the review, but this one, you can find it on my reverb shop. But cool, that leaves one last guitar to talk about for today before we pack some stuff up. And it sleeps in here. And it's gotta be like one of the coolest SGs that Gibson came out with. I think this model first originated like late 2014 into 2015 and then i'd always thought it you know just stopped but apparently there's been like limited runs for many years after that i'd have to do some more in-depth research but this is like a fantastic looking sg they call this one the sg s3 not to be confused with the sg3 because that also has three humbucker pickups like that, but it doesn't have the sideways trim. And it was part of the Guitar of the Week series. It had the chicken head knob where you select the different positions. This one is more so like a Gibson SG standard right here meets a custom on the body because you get the gold hardware, you get the triple pickups like the SG customs typically have, and the very fancy sideways vibrola. I really don't like these things because I can never get them to stay in tune. <laughs> I don't think these things have any fancy electronics or anything like that, but they're just a really sweet look and the value of them have just gone up so much. I mean, this one's definitely player's grade. It's got a ding right there. And honestly, it feels like a strap rubbed it through. I could touch that up with my black lacquer pen. Honestly, I think I will. It's always hard to decide, do you touch up a guitar or not? Usually if it has anything to do with the headstock, like in typical brake crack repair areas, not a good idea to. But if there's only one area on the entire guitar that needs a little bit of a touch up, I think at that point, you're okay just to do that. It'll look all right. But I do have a really old review, uh, I think I think of a 2015, but this one is actually fairly new. This one has an early 2019 serial number to it. So it's always good to have one of these things. I mean, just look at it. It is beautiful. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these guitars that I just recently got. The only thing that we have left to do today is say goodbye to a couple of them. Longtime viewers of the show are gonna know the pain I'm going through on this one again, but it's 1000% my own fault. 
So I sold this guitar too cheaply the first time, but thankfully it came back to me as like a partial trade-in or something. I think I might have just bought this one back. And we're talking about my Kazuyoshi Saito signature Les Paul. This freaky beautiful thing that is an unofficial prototype. It's labeled CC Aging Proto number 8. And it truly is the perfect Les Paul for me. I love this little access heel joint right here. It's not like all access, it's just shaved down a little bit. But it's got all the vintage aesthetics with the modern playability. One P90 pickup there with a nice gorgeous belly. Check out the review and demo for this one if you want because Kazuyoshi Saito, I mean, he's got a few other signature guitars even since then. But this has to be my favorite one that he's done. This one here, I tried to do my good deed for the day. This just happened to be a birth year Les Paul custom for someone, so I cut him a deal even though I wasn't accepting offers on this guitar. So hopefully it goes to a good home and he's not just making stories up. I'm sure if I get a large influx of people trying to get outrageously good deals, I'll have to ask for some verification. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, time to send this beautiful Tobacco Burst Lost Paul Custom. What year is it? 79? Yep. 79271. Our next one to pack up is the Yvette Young Signature. You know, the more I actually watched her play the guitar, I always thought she was mainly known for her tapping skills, but... It's not necessarily just tapping. Like, sure, she'll do some tapping licks, but it's mainly just the way that she picks the instrument. I always thought she was doing little taps up here, but then when you really watch what she's doing, it's like, okay, so she's mainly known for the alternate tuning. You get the capo and then super melodic stuff. I would definitely suggest people check out a Tallman. I like the headstock. I like the body shape, even though it's a little bit untraditional. Now this was a truly fascinating guitar here. When I first saw these things get released, I wasn't all that impressed. Even with Fender's official video, I don't know if it's out yet or not, when I was releasing this one, they had just posted it as unlisted the same day. So once again, I beat you, Fender. <laughs> That's a playful jab, but the perloid binding on this, I had some people say that this reminds them of like a, a wedding tuxedo from the 70s. And you know, I get it now. And initially when these things were launched, they were called the El Mahiko. And in some languages that means the magician. And I can totally see a magician having, you know, all this fancy stuff on it, you know, pulling something out of their top hat or whatnot. So I'm kind of curious why L was dropped from the title of this and it's just called the Mahiko. Some people were saying that just means magic, other ones magician, I don't know. I think these will become future collectibles, future stars of the series, once more people realize just how beautiful they are. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.